Good morning and welcome to Worship Online with Grosio Presbyterian Church. I'm Philip Reed, pastor of this faithful and generous congregation, and it's great to have you with us on this, the fourth Sunday in Advent. It's getting close to Christmas, and we'd like to announce and remind you of Christmas Eve services here from Grosio Presbyterian Church. Christmas Eve will, will be online and you can start to view our online Christmas Eve service at 10 a.m. via YouTube. And you can watch that on YouTube at any point during the day. We'll post it at 10 and you can start to view at your home or wherever you are. Then we'll premiere our Christmas Eve service, that same service, at 7.30 on Facebook Live. So go to our Facebook page and you can find us. We'll be there at 7.30 for premiering our Christmas Eve service. And uh, that's when you'll be able to comment and, and experience others present in that way. Boy, don't miss it. Our Christmas Eve service will be powerful and exciting for you. And I'm excited because this year, you'll be able to view it in your home, with your family, with some loved ones. And uh, not that that doesn't happen in church, but it's kind of neat to think about this all happening at home this year. We will have two in-person services, at least that's the plan, on Christmas Eve, 10.30 and 5 p.m. Now, these will not be our typical Christmas Eve services, and we're going to practice all the guidelines. So we would ask you to please, please, please make a reservation. Call the church, give, send us an email, tell us who, if you're going to be present at one of these services and how many people will be with you, because we are limiting in capacity, so we have to count and be under a certain number. We'll also ask that everyone wear masks, practice social distancing, no greeting via contact, uh, physical contact. So we're going to be extraordinarily careful this Christmas Eve, but we will be in person, 10.30, 5 p.m., very limited music, no passing candles, abbreviated service, perhaps 20, 25 minutes in length. We'd be happy to see you uh, following all the guidelines Christmas Eve. So, we'll be online beginning at 10 a.m. on YouTube, Grosio Presbyterian Church, we're easy to find on YouTube. We'll premiere on Facebook at 7.30, Grosio Presbyterian Church, Church Facebook page, and then in person, 10.30, 5 o'clock, following all guidelines. Please make a reservation for the in-person services. Now, one of our most happy things to do here, when somebody is 90 years or older and they have a birthday, we love to sing to them in church, and we continue that tradition online. Today, we're wishing happy birthday to Marge Conley. She's 90 or over. Happy birthday, Marge. We love you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Marge. Happy birthday to you and many more. Friends, let us begin our worship on this fourth Sunday in Advent by saying together our prayer. Startle us, O God, with your truth and your lively, life-giving presence. Come out of nowhere into the here and now, this day, this morning, this time together. Touch our hearts with your grace. Strengthen our spirit with your love in Jesus Christ which comes to us in surprising ways. In his holy name we pray, amen. 
We continue our Advent theme of a surprising Christmas, and today we focus on Mary, surprising Mary, Jesus' mother. Friends, let us worship God. Please join me in the call to worship. God is coming. We are not alone. How can this be? In Christ, we are accepted. We are set free from the past. We are given a bright and hopeful future. As we receive this unimaginable and surprising gift, our response must be, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Let us worship God. On Christmas night, all Christians sing to hear the news the angels bring. On Christmas night, all Christians sing to hear the news the angels bring. News of great joy, news of great mirth, news of our merciful King's birth. 
Then why should we on earth be sad since our Redeemer made us glad? Then why should we on earth be sad since our Redeemer made us glad? When from our sin he set us free, all for to gain our liberty. When sin departs before his grace, then life and health come in its place. When sin departs before his grace, then life and health come in its place. Heaven and earth with joy may sing, all for to see the newborn King. All out of darkness we have light, which made the angels sing this night. All out of darkness we have light, which made the angels sing this night. Glory to God in highest heaven, peace on earth and goodwill of men. <laughs> joining me for another children's moment today. Today I'm sitting in front of our Christmas tree. John set up the tree and put all the lights on so now all we have to do is decorate it with our ornaments. And I love doing that. I love taking the ornaments out of the boxes and unwrapping them from their tissue paper and hanging them because then I remember what the symbols on those ornaments mean, who gave me those ornaments, uh, the time that I got those ornaments. And then once we have all those ornaments up there, our tree is decorated and we're ready to celebrate Christmas. But one thing that our tree doesn't have that yours might have, uh, we don't have a tree topper. So we don't have anything that goes at the tippy top of our tree. And so you, you guys might have that. You might have a star at the top. That's a great symbol to have at the top of your tree because uh, there was a star in the sky that the three wise men followed and they followed that star and it led them to Jesus. So it's a great Christmas symbol to have at the top of your tree. Um, another thing that people have is an angel. An angel's a great thing to have at the top of the tree because angels play a really big part of the Christmas story. Sometimes when we think about angels, we just think about people who are hanging out up in the clouds, flying around, singing songs, playing trumpets, and hanging out with God. 
And I think that angels do do some of those things, but angels actually have a really important job. Angels are God's messengers. So when we read in the Bible, there's a lot of times that God wants to get a message to, to some human. So God sends an angel to tell that human either something that God needs them to know or that God wants them to do. So that's a big job. Sometimes people are scared of the angels because that's not an everyday thing for an angel to just pop up and give you a message. So people are scared and sometimes the message is hard to hear. Sometimes it's a big responsibility. And so in today's story, we're going to hear about an angel coming to Mary. And this angel comes to Mary, says, do not be afraid because the angel knows that Mary's going to be afraid because that's a weird thing to happen. The angel says, do not be afraid. And then gives Mary this message from God, that Mary is going to have a baby and that that baby is going to be the son of God. It's a big deal when any mother finds out that she's going to have a baby. That's a big deal. But for Mary to find out that not only was she going to be a mother, but that she was going to be the mom to the Son of God, that was a big deal. So Mary was a little bit scared. She was a little bit confused. She didn't quite understand. But what's amazing is that after that, Mary says, okay. Mary says yes. God gives Mary this enormous responsibility through the angel, and Mary says yes. Not everyone does. People have a really hard time sometimes with the angel's uh, message messages, but not Mary. Mary says yes. So I think that Mary is one of the strongest, bravest women, bravest people in the Bible. And I think that we should all try to be a little bit more like Mary. Now, maybe we won't have an angel come into our living room to give us a message, but we know what God needs us to do. There's a lot of things that we know that God needs from us, a lot of responsibilities we need to have. So we read about it in the Bible, and we know what we hear about it in church. And so when we hear those messages, even if they're not from an angel, we know there's still a message from God. And so we want to be like Mary and say, okay, let's do it. So I hope that we can all do that together this Christmas season and throughout the, the coming year. So when you're going through this week, think about, hmm, what is it that God needs me to do? And then be like Mary and say, yes, God, I will do it. Will you guys pray with me? Dear Lord, thank you so much for people like Mary. We thank you for Mary for saying yes to being the mother of your son, Jesus Christ. We are so grateful for her faith and her strength. And we ask that you help us to have that same faith and that same strength so that we can follow you and bring about your kingdom. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, I'll see you next time. Bye. Let us pray. Lord, Advent is a time of preparation and excitement as we look forward to the birth of Jesus Christ. The story of his birth and all leading up to it is filled with surprises. Our lives are full of surprises as well. Some are welcome and others are challenging. Help us to see and hear the light in all of life's surprises. Open our hearts today as we listen to one part of the story of Christ's birth, the most welcome surprise of all. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, greetings favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, 
and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christmas is surprising. Mary is just an ordinary Jewish young woman. She has ordinary dreams for her life, like getting married to a carpenter named Joseph. But Mary and Joseph are poor, like everyone else in their village, like everyone else in that part of the world, actually. They do not have grand expectations for their lives, nor do they have lofty goals for what they hope to accomplish. When you feel ordinary, you do not expect to one day be talking with an angel named Gabriel, especially if that angel is telling you that God is about to do you a favor. Mary shows us that even ordinary people are capable of extraordinary faith. Mary is the example of what a robust and responsive faith looks like. Mary is not expecting visitors, and she is certainly not expecting a visit from an angel, but here he is with the afterglow of divine light standing before her, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But Mary was perplexed and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The word pondered in Mary's response to Gabriel's announcement is not a very good translation of the New Testament Greek. The actual Greek word here means to make an audit. It is an accounting word, a financial word, a word from the marketplace, and it means adding things up, weighing and wandering, to be intensely sound and sensible. No one can accuse Mary of anything like blind faith. It's not that Mary automatically believes what is happening she is confused. She is struggling. She is asking, am I really seeing an angel? Is this a hallucination? What's going on here? Mary shows us that responding in faith is a whole person experience, and that does not shut down the intellect. Instead, it includes it. Mary shows us how faith works. At first, faith includes some doubt. At first, faith includes some questions. Faith includes using our God-given intellect to try to figure things out, all the while keeping an open mind. And this is the key, an open mind mind, a mind that is open to the supernatural, a mind that is open to the miraculous, a mind that is open to a God who actually communicates, a mind that is open to a surprising God who does real things in the real world. There is a kind of doubt that is the sign of a closed mind. And there is the kind of doubt that is the sign of an open mind. Some doubt seeks answers. Some doubt is a defense against 
all the possibility of answers. Our world is full of people with closed minds. Then, there are people who have open minds, and this is where God gets in. Mary responds thoughtfully to the angel Gabriel. Mary also responds gradually to Gabriel's announcement. Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. Of course Mary is afraid. Who wouldn't be? This is a major interruption in Mary's life, a seemingly impossible thing. And Mary replies, how can this be? Notice that the angel Gabriel simply announces God's plan for Mary's life. The angel does not ask Mary's permission. This is one of the things that is most difficult to understand about God because when it comes to decision making, we are big on process. We like to be consulted. We like to be kept in the loop. We like to have big decisions run by us so that we can give our input. But this is not the way that God often works. There are times when God does not consult us, as God did not consult Mary. Here's why. Because we often do not know what is best for us. We like to believe that we always know what is best, but the fact is, often we do not. Consequently, God surprises us by sending us to places we don't want to go, by giving us gifts we do not want, by calling us to do things we don't think we can do, and taking away things to which we would cling too tightly. Because God surprises us, because we often think we know what it's best for us, we respond slowly. Faith is rarely instantaneous. Usually, it grows gradually. Usually, we have to grow through our fear. Now, and only now, Mary responds faithfully. Gabriel assures her, for nothing is impossible with God. Mary responds, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. Here I am, says Mary. She's not diminishing herself. She's not thinking less of herself. She's not giving up on herself. She's not surrendering herself. Mary is affirming herself as an empowered individual. Here I am. The servant of the Lord. She says boldly, stating who she understands herself to be. First and foremost, she sees herself as a servant, the servant of the Lord. The top priority in her life is not her own comfort, not her own sense of ambition and accomplishment, not what she wants and desires. Instead, first, she is the Lord's servant. And let it be to me, according to your word. It's not that Mary knows more about the course of her life at this point. It's not that Gabriel has filled her in with all the details and assured her that everything will work out just fine. It's not that Mary can now understand 
beyond all her doubts and questions, Mary proceeds, as we often are called to do in our lives, by making a commitment without knowing much about what it will entail and where it will lead. Mary is called upon to respond, and she does, faithfully. Let it be to me according to your word. In other words, let this happen. Let this happen to me. Let this happen through me. Mary is faithful. But it's taken some time. Why does faith take time? Because faith is more than a decision. Because faith is more than an act of the will. True faith is not something that we decide to exercise ourselves. Faith is not a process in which we are in control. We are not capable on our own of simply believing in God or simply believing in Jesus. God has to open our hearts and help us break through our fears, our prejudices, and our incredibly stubborn and selfish will. One of the marks of real faith is that there's a sense of an outside power at work inside of us. This power shows us things that we find incredible. It helps us to see what is true, and then it enables us and empowers us to act and to give ourselves to it. This power is nothing less than the Holy Spirit within us. Unless the Spirit comes to us, as the angel came to Mary, we would not be able to have faith because faith is not simply our decision. Faith is not simply the act of our will. Faith is a gift of God's Spirit. Mary embodies one of the most radical ideas in the Bible that God chooses human beings to bring about the kingdom, that God comes to and chooses unlikely, surprisingly unexpected, unprepared, and unequipped human beings to do the work of the kingdom. God chooses these people and then awaits a response for a yes. Here I am. Let it be to me. Mary models what it means to be faithful. Mary shows us what faith looks like. Mary is the quintessential disciple of Jesus Christ. She shows us how to respond to God thoughtfully, gradually, and finally faithfully, which is good because our God is a surprising God who will surprise us over and over again. Sometime during this Christmas season, probably when you're least expecting it, in a way you never would have imagined, God will come to you and ask you to be someone you've never been before, to trust, to love, to give, to open yourself to another, to be vulnerable. Perhaps it's a new venture you've been afraid to follow up on, at least up until now, or perhaps it's facing a surgery or another difficult event in your life or something else. Perhaps it's finally dealing with someone you haven't dealt with for a while. 
in all of these circumstances, the outcome is uncertain and you are afraid. Mary shows us how to respond. Mary shows us how to be thoughtful, gradual, and finally faithful. Mary shows us how to get to here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. Mary shows you and me that ordinary people are capable of extraordinary faith because of the Holy Spirit.
Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we thank you for Mary, an example of faith, a quintessential disciple of Jesus Christ. We thank you for how she responded to Gabriel's announcement. She responded thoughtfully, gradually, and faithfully, and may we do the same. May we be thoughtful people, people with open minds, not with minds already made up, not with positions already in concrete. Help us to be people who are gracious and accessible and open to your guidance and direction. Especially this time of year, especially when relationships can get tense and when people's positions can get hardened. May we be people who are open to the Holy Spirit. And that means may we be gradual people as well. In other words, help us to think before we talk. Help us to consider before we say something out loud. Let us not be rash, impatient, so set in the way we think about things that we can't take a moment and be gracious and considerate. And finally, may we be faithful people, people who receive your word and trust in it. Prepare us by your Holy Spirit this day and for the next few days to receive Jesus Christ on Christmas Eve. Prepare our hearts, our minds, our souls that they might become a manger in which Christ is born. He is the one who has come to save the people from their sins. He is the one who has come to show people how to live. He is the one who has come to suffer and sacrifice in order that our sins might be forgiven. He is the one who will be raised to show us the way to eternal life. He is the one who is the Lord this year, a difficult year. May we receive him and be changed because of it. We pray for all who are ill or injured this time of year. We pray for those strug struggling with COVID-19 and we're very thankful for the coming of vaccinations. We pray for those who are struggling we pray for those who grieve this time of year. We pray those who know a deeper sadness at Christmas. And we pray for the least and the lonely and the lost and those who are hungry and those who are homeless. We pray for those who suffer injustice. Oh God, this is a time of peace and goodwill toward all people. May peace break out this week. May your peace fill and surround us. All these things we pray in the name of Jesus, the one who teaches his disciples to pray in this way. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It is the season of giving and so we have crafted a little moment here in our worship service 
for us to give. It's not just about giving material things, though, or giving our finances. It's, it's about giving ourselves to God, offering ourselves to God, as Mary did. Let it be to me according to your will. Here is Mary giving herself to God's purposes in this world. Here is Mary giving herself to God's will in this world. Here is Mary, a servant, saying, I will continue to be a servant. I continue to find meaning in my life and significance in my life by presenting myself to God. Let us do the same. Let us be generous people. In this season of giving, let us give.
My soul cries out with a joyful shout that the God of my heart is great, and my spirit sings of the wondrous things that you bring to the ones who wait. You fixed your sight on your servant's plight, and my weakness you did not spurn. So from east to west shall my name be blessed, could the world be about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. Though I am small, my God, my all, you work great things in me, and your mercy will last from the depths of the past to the From the halls of power to the fortress tower, not a stone will be left on stone. Let the king beware, for your justice tears every tyrant from his throne. The hungry poor shall weep no more, for the food they can
She was just an ordinary Jewish young woman. Together with Joseph, she didn't have really lofty ambitions and goals. She probably was just expecting to live an ordinary life within the parameters that had been set for her. But that's not what God had in mind. That's not what God's plan was for her. She was given an assignment which she thought about, which took a while for her to accept, but which she finally responded to in faith. Let it be to me according to your word. She shows us that ordinary people are capable of extraordinary faith. Ordinary people like you and like me know that the Holy Spirit is at work in you at this moment, encouraging an extraordinary faith on your part. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, these blessings are with you now, and they always are. Amen and amen.